Hey everyone, so we are jamming along with our May cuties. Are you ready for more? Hey everyone, Kristen Som here, and we are just doing great with our May cuties. We did the triangle blocks. Those are by far the longest part of this project. How did you like all of the cutting of these little tiny scallop pieces? <laughs> <laughs> that took some time, huh? So today we are just going to work on our outer borders and those corner blocks. It will be easy. And actually, I believe that we use the same quilting design that we used last month. So if you have that file saved from last month, then your job is really easy today. So we won't have to do the embrilliance part of it. We can just um, load it into our machine and get stitching. So let's talk about what we need for today. So this one's done, that's the triangle block. So the corner blocks is the first one. And if you recall from our um, prep video, the prepping our fabrics video, I mentioned that I highly recommend cutting your corner blocks larger than what is listed in the book. In the book, it'll have these at two and a half by two and a half. And I recommend cutting them to three by three if you're able to. So it's a scrap fabric that comes. So it's really based on what you have available. Available. So mine was just under six inches, six by six, and so I cut it just under um, three by three. So mine aren't quite three by three, but they're a little bit bigger. And as long as they're a little bit bigger, the whole point is so that it will cut catch when we do that uh, placement and tack down. So our corner fabrics, like I said, if possible, three by three is my recommendation. Um, but in the book, it has it at two and a half by two and a half, and that'll work too. Make sure to, uh, well, choose your, your choice. I backed mine with Fusible Stabilizer, the Kimberbell Fusible Backing. It makes it so that it will um, not pucker at all when we do our quilting. So four pieces, and then for your batting, same thing, three by three for your batting, four pieces of three by three for your batting. And then we are going to do my chair sinking. <laughs> we are going to do, um, Bitty block flower for these. That will be really cute with these butterfly blocks of flower. So bitty block flower in a two by two quilting design um, that the bitty blocks have their own folder. You, I'm sure you've seen it already in the um, quilting bundle. So that's for the corner blocks. <laughs> We could use a five by seven folder or um, hoop, sorry. I think three, six, yep, we should be able to. It's two and a half by two and a half. So I think my prep, you could do this in a five by seven. You could do it in a six by six. You could do it in an eight by eight. I think I'm going to do a six by six just to give me a little bit more room for that fabric. So I'm gonna go to um, this preferences folder and click on my six by six hoop. Like I said, you can do this in a five by seven. Um, it just will be a little bit tighter of a fit. The, the quilting design will be two and a half inches. It's probably maybe even a little bit lower. No, it won't. It will be two and a half. So it will be five inches total, but your fabric is um, six inches total. So there's you wouldn't have to worry about too much fabric. All right, so we have, I'm on my six by six hoop. You can see it down here. I'm gonna go to this compass button and click on H to zoom into the hoop. And I'm going to go to merge stitch file and we're looking for that bitty blocks, right there, bitty blocks. And it was a shovel. We're doing block by block. And there's the shovel, right? Yep, shovel. Double click on that, it will go to the center. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on the stitching. There's not a whole lot of stitching on this, so make sure that you're clicking on the stitching when you move it. And then we've got those default blues and oranges. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and quickly change the colors before I do a copy and paste. So we have the two blues and the two oranges. <coughs> Excuse me, if I click on that first one and click on the color, I'm gonna choose the first color that comes up, which is dark aqua and say okay. And then the second one, click on the color. First color that comes up for me is blaze. And then one three, click on the color. And we already used dark aqua, so I'm gonna use marine and say okay. And one four, click on the color. And we already used blaze, so I'm gonna use oriole. 
And then the turquoise, I want them all to be the same color. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave that. All right. And then we have all of that done so we can easily do a copy and paste. So if I click on the design, you can do it over here or you can do it over here. Either way will work the, the same as long as you've got your block selected. And then I'm going to say control C to copy and control V like victory to paste it. And it goes right on top of that first one. So you can't really see it until you click on it and move it over on the side. All right, that's the second one. That's perfect. And then another control V like victory to bring in a third design. And I'm going to bring it all the way down here to the bottom corner and then control V like victory to make a fourth one. And I'm going to bring it down to the corner again making sure not to go over those hoop lines. Don't forget, this is pretty close. I'm going to bring it up just a tiny, tiny bit. And how's that one? Yep, that's fine. As long as you can see the black squares, then you know that you're not too far over the hoop. This one could even go up just a tiny bit. Okay, so those four are done. I'm going to go ahead and close these just so I can see them, even though I don't really need to because I um, don't need to do a line and distribute. I, I just moved them into the corners. And then we have 20 color steps, so we can go ahead and do a color sort, utility color sort. And it thinks, thinks, thinks it reduced it by 15. Don't forget about these, the tolerance being at zero. Click new view. Now we have four tabs. And I'm going to just click open so that I can check them. So there's the placement for our batting all together and our tack down of our batting, our placement for our main fabric and our tack down of our main fabric and the quilting design, which is just that cute little shovel. So those are done. That was super easy. <clears throat> I'm curious what thread color you're going to use for these. I think I want them to stand out. I'm not sure what I want to put on there. That's just super cute. All right, so those are done. Um, I don't have my machine on, so I'm going to do a file, save stitch file as. Actually, I would do that even if my machine was on. And I'm going to go to those bitty blocks. Let's see. The bundle, embroidery files, pez, bitty blocks, block by block. And I am going to say shovel times four save. All right, so those are done. You can um, transfer those to your machine wirelessly if your machine does that, or you can um, transfer them to a USB stick. And it's time to get started on our outer borders and our corner blocks. <laughs> have our order outer borders so our outer borders are on page 41 the bitty blocks are as well the corner blocks uh, so let's just talk about what we need for that so for our outer borders we have this mint doodle fabric this is so pretty it's actually one of my favorites I remember last year I think it was that um, this was really hard to find everybody was out of it I don't remember what project whoops sorry totally kicked my light um, so our um, outer border fabric the mint doodles four of these and I don't have the size yet let me pull that up real quick here page 41 and 
we are going to start with these. I uh, don't forget that I recommended in the in the fabric prep video that you cut them longer than what is in the book. But in the book, it has, let's see, our outer borders at two and a half by 18. So that means I recommended two and a half by 20. If you, if you have enough fabric, and I had plenty to be able to do that. So two and a half by 20 is my reckon, recommendation. And then just like how you saw how we did the inner borders, we'll assemble and then cut it down after assembly. That's just a way to make sure that you have enough um, in case it pulls in from the stitching or anything else if your quarter inch seam allowance is off or Whatever the case may be, you just want to make sure that these are long enough and then we can cut them down at assembly. So two and a half by 24 pieces. All right, and then our batting, just like how we did the inner borders, we're going to attach our um, batting to our inner border strips. And we want these to be exactly the size needed. So these, let's see, what do I have? Not inner borders, outer border. There we are. Two by 17 and a half. Two by 17 and a half. And you want four pieces of it. And like I said, we will attach these on um, with a glue stick or that spray, the fabric spray. I'm not sure what it's called because I use the glue sticks. But um, two and a half by... Uh, 20 or oh, I'm sorry the batting two and a half two by 17 and a half two by 17 and a half for your batting sorry about that all right that's for our batting um and then I will show you in last month's video I will copy and paste that part of the Embrilliance Essentials so that you can do it in two hoopings if you choose depending on your hoop size um we will need these are longer so we will need at least two hoopings because nobody has a hoop that is um 20 inches long so, or not that I know of anyway, maybe you do. <laughs> Mine doesn't. So my, my biggest is 16. So I will do two hoopings. If I recall, I think I did the one, the 14, the two, um, we need 18 inches of quilting. So I think I did the 10 inch twice. I believe that's what I did and probably used my, um, 10 by 10 hoop. I'm not sure. I don't recall to tell you the truth, but it's all on last month's tutorial. And I'm just going to copy and paste that from last month rather than do it all again. Um, and if you have your file from last month, I'll tell you in the video where you can um, hit fast forward and go to the end of the video or the part that's got all the photos um, but you won't need to pay too much attention to the embrilliance section if you already did this last month because like I said we're going to use the same quilting as last month so let me just grab that real quick page 14 has our quilting information for our outer borders we're going to do border circles in a two inch design border circles in a two inch design and like i said we want 18 inches of quilting um we've got the i have the strips all the same length but we're going to attach those corner blocks so and i'll show you how to do it just like i have every month don't worry i did back mine with fusible stabilizer by the way it's up to you so let's get started on our um, corner blocks and our outer borders <laughs> everyone so I'm at my computer and I just want to show you how to do the corner blocks and the outer borders and then we will be done uh, with our Embrilliance tutorials for the April Cuties. So I'm going to open up Embrilliance Essentials that's the embroidery software that I prefer and we are going to start with the outer borders. So the outer borders we're looking for the uh, border circles two inch design. Hi Arger. <laughs> Do you hear him? Oh, you're so silly. All right, so I am going to, let's see, I'm on my 9 by 14 hoop right now. You can see that right down here. I'm going to change it to my 10 by 10. I think that will be better. Uh, let's see here. I haven't already tested this out, so I'm just going to try it out here. All right, so that's my 10 by 10 hoop. And then if I go up here, so I went to preferences by the full, by the preferences folder to open up the hoop size that I wanted. And then I'm going to click on this compass and click H so I can zoom into the hoop. All right, so merge stitch file. And like I said, we're looking for border circles, two inch design. Border circles. I wonder if it'll just say chevron and squares, diamonds and sunburst, orange bills and circles right there. So the fourth, one, two, three, fourth folder down. 
And there's that orange pill that we used on our inner borders. Oh, there's the circles. That's pretty. All right, so I haven't already tested to see what size these all are. I'm guessing we'll probably need the 12. I'm gonna click on that one first, the two by 12. I'm gonna double click on that. And it says it's too big, so it's 11 and 1 16th. So that's a nice size for the 12 inch. Let's see here, there we go. All right, so um, that's actually the same size as the ones that we used earlier for the orange peel, the 11 and 1 8th. So that's a little bit too big. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just keep opening the others just so that we know what size that they are. So I'm going to go to Merge Stitch File and then that fourth folder down, the um, orange peel and the circles. And we did the 12. Let's see what size the 10 is. So the 10, if I click on that, there we go. It's 9 and 7 16 so the same size as the other one that we talked about before. And then I'm going to just check the 14 also. So if I go to merge stitch file, I'm just trying to see which one will fit best to be able to get a full 18 inches of quilting. So let's see here. There's the 14. That's the 10. This one. There we go. 13 and 3 16 All right. So that's different. 13 and 3 13. 13 and 13 sixteenths. All right, so that's a big one. Um, so if we were to do the 10, the 10 was nine and a half. That's this one, just under nine and a half. If we did that, we'd have a little over 18. So actually that one is the best one for me. So depending on, excuse my dog. <laughs> I think he puts his whole face in the in the bowl when he drinks water. My goodness. Um, so if we do the 10 inch size, then it's almost nine and a half inches and we want 18 inches total. So if we did two hoopings of the 10 inch, I think that would be the best. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the 14 and the 12. I'm going to go with the 10, which like I said, is nine and seven sixteenths. You can see it down here. That's for the length. So depending on your hoop size and um, the, the length that you want, um, the overall length, we want to try and get as close to 18 as we can. So this one will be a little bit more, but that will just run off onto the excess of the border strips because we will have our batting cut to the exact size. So that will be totally fine. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring this all the way over to the left right there. And I'm going to go ahead and change these real quick. I would think that there's, oh, there's the light orange. Okay. So I want to point this out. Like I mentioned in the inner borders video, you could click on this one and click delete on your keyboard and click on the next one, which is currently one, two and click delete on your keyboard. You don't need those first two steps. If you're going to add the batting, like I'm going to, I'm going to leave these in just because I want to, um, tell everyone to bypass it. I want to remember to tell everyone to bypass it. So I'm going to change it. But notice if you take out these first two, then you have a default one blue, a default light orange, and a default turquoise. So you wouldn't need to do any color sorting at all. I need to color sort just this one because these others are all different. So I'm going to not color sort. I'm going to change the color on this one. So just the first one. And like I said, you don't need this one. You could delete it. So right now we have all five as different colors. And so as long as we do a copy and paste and then it will be all the same and those will join as we want them to. All right. So again, you can delete one and two. I'm going to keep it. And I just changed that first one to a dark aqua so that um, it will not group with this default one blue. All right. So that one is all done. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to say control C to copy and then control V like victory to paste it. All right, there's that second one and the colors are already the colors that I want. So that's perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and just haphazardly bring it over here. And then I'm gonna do a control V like victory to paste a third one. And then 
control V like victory for the last one. So now we have four and this first and the last one, I recommend bringing them all the way over to the edge so that um, when we do our align and distribute, you know, it doesn't matter about these two because they're going to move, but we do want one and four all the way to the edge of our hoop if possible. All right, and then I'm gonna close these windows very quickly here. And then I am going to click and drag up so that I've got all four designs selected and I'm going to go to utility align and distribute and I'm going to move it to the distribute button and I'm going to say center center right there and apply and you saw it moved it so that they're all in line and they have the same amount of space between looks like this one's a little bit less to me but close enough all right so I'm going to say apply and close all right, so then, so these have um, a very small amount of space in between each one, but are, um, are, what are they called? The outer border strips are basically, this is two inches. Yes, let's see, two in each one. So if we just clicked on one, can't seem to click on the stitching. Why is that? There we go. Um, so it's two and a half inches and are, um, our strips are two and a half inches, so it probably will not tack down. Yeah, it probably will not tack down, um, but that's okay. Bottom line is that we're not, we don't need a bunch of space in between is my point that I was trying to make because the strips are the same size as this quilting. So that's all done. We do want to do a color sort because right now we have 20 color steps and we could probably bring that down to about five. So let's go ahead and try that. So again, you want to click on all four of the designs. I click down and then drag up is the easiest way I found. And I go to utility color sort and it thinks, thinks, thinks. Don't forget to have the same settings that I have here to get the same results as I have. And it says the design page has been reduced by 15 color changes. I'm gonna click new view so that I can see it and just make sure it did what I want. There's the placement for the batting and the tack down for the batting, the placement for the main fabric, the tack down for the main fabric, and it's just the sides when it does borders and then all of the four quilting designs. So that is perfect. I really like that quilting design. That will be fun for Easter or spring. So that's good. So I am going to do a file, save stitch file as, and I'm in the embroidery designs it looks like. Yep, so I want to go to the quilting design right there, the bundle cuties bundle embroidery files pez is what i use and i'm going back to that centers what was it orange peel and circles right there that fourth one down and save it in there so that if we use these circles design in a later um project then i've already got them all all organized so i am going to say um two by ten circles times four all right, so I have four of them. That will remind me that I've got all of those and that one is done.
gonna try and show you the the how to attach the corners with holding this and a ruler and so forth so it might be a little shaky um, so start by attaching one corner on not the other corner just the one all right so with a quarter inch seam allowance like usual and then line up your um, table topper along a bottom edge and then line up your your strip here with the one piece attached lining it up with that quarter inch seam allowance there and then go to the other end you can see it goes longer because we made it longer we have not attached the other corner on yet and the way that you want to figure out the exact size is you know that you want the full you want it to stop here at this seam allowance but you also need a quarter inch further because we're going to sew quarter inch extra here quarter inch extra on the corner so the way that I do it like I said line this up matching up your seams because we've already sewn that one on and then for this one what I do is I take my ruler and I line up the quarter inch part of the ruler there's a little quarter inch guide here and I line that up with my seam the quarter inch part okay at the quarter inch line at my seam and then that tells me where to cut all right so it's basically at 20 on mine but yours may be different so if you use this technique you'll always get it right line up a quarter inch in from that seam you can see through the ruler there's the seam and there's my quarter inch and that's where I would cut because then I'm getting a quarter inch for each side to be able to sew on the corner and you can see I'm doing this one-handed so it's a little bit hard but you can see that for mine it's right about at the 20 little bit past that but I'm gonna do it by this not by the 20 I'm gonna do it by the quarter inch seam and then cut there and sew on my other um, corner block so I already did this one using that same technique I haven't ironed it down yet but you can see it worked out perfect all right I hope that helps I'm gonna keep going I don't know how much I'll be able to get done in one night but either way I'm gonna tell you about the next part so that we can um, if possible keep going so our backing fabric the next part is our backing so my backing fabric I mentioned this in the prep video that mine is just a tan silky solid some of them some of you may receive um, the floral the tan floral petal fabrics as your backing fabric and either way whatever you receive works fine um, so our backing fabric I'm not stabilizing this and leaving it as is and our backing fabric is I believe 24 by 24 
All right, sorry about that. So our backing fabric is 24 by 24. And really that doesn't matter. What I generally do is I finish my entire, the the quilt top, or it's not really a quilt, but the, the uh, cuties table top or top. And then I put my backing fabric on top of that or underneath that. And then I cut from there and I cut an inch out further and then trim it down after it's attached so how whatever works for you but 24 by 24 is what is in the guide um, like I said I actually don't cut mine before I lay it down um, when my project is complete and I do the whole stitch in the ditch and then I cut it from there so cut it after that part's done all right so that's the backing And then the last part of this project oh my gosh aren't you so excited so we're going to do the stitch in the ditch with the backing of course um, but after that's all done we are going to do our binding so binding is on page 41 and I did not stabilize this fabric. I mentioned in the prep video that if you can um, put an X on it or something so that you remember on the guide to not um, prep these with uh, stabilizer, fusible stabilizer, just leave it as is. So on this one, we are gonna have, um, minus the tan with the flowers, petal flowers on it, um, but there's a couple things on here. So it's two and a half times width of fabric, two of those, two pieces that are two and a half by width of fabric. So long, long, long fabric. And then one of them is two and a half by 20. But what I did, and I did, I've done this every month, I just cut three of them at two and a half by width of fabric because there's enough fabric to do that. So that's what I did. Um, it makes it a little bit simpler, I think. So two and a half by width of fabric, three of them or two of them, and then one that is two two and a half by 20. Either way will work fine. And I'm going to give you a few tips on how I do the binding. You do it however works for you. You may have a tried and true method that works for you and that's great. Um, I have one that I've been using and, and I like that. So I will add photos and maybe a little bit of video of how I do it. So make sure and get your binding. And this is the last step. How exciting. <laughs>
how are you doing with your goal? I really want to hear about it. I know a lot of people are working on iFit goals like I am and trying to earn the April badge. That's pretty exciting. I think I have two more bike rides of the Amped Cycling to finish the badge one or two. And then for my Ireland challenge, that's the one that I'm working on um, for this uh, project, the Ireland challenge. I only have two more runs and I did one last night. It was really funny. I worked until about 1130 last night trying to get ready for the triangles, get everything ready for the triangles block that I did uh, yesterday. Anyway, so late last night, like midnight, I actually got on my treadmill and I did one of the running challenges. Thankfully, they're short. They're like 20 minutes or something. So it wasn't, it wasn't too late that I was going to bed too late or anything like that, but I fit it in and that felt really good. Remember how I was telling you before that just hitting that start button or getting outside, whatever it is, that's the hardest part is fitting it in and making it work and making it a priority. So I was pretty proud of myself for making that work last night. So tell me, how are you doing with your goal? I really want to hear about it. And my shirt today is a tank top. Oh my gosh. So um, Idaho seems to have gone from winter to summer. <laughs> <laughs> we don't we didn't seem to really get a spring although we did get lots of rain and hail and all of that so I guess that was spring but anyway it was warm today it's still super windy like gusts of wind up to 40 miles an hour but other than that it was like 74 degrees or something just beautiful so I'm wearing a tank top today I will add a photo because the back of my tank top is embroidered it's one of I made a bunch of these tank tops um, while I was going through my cancer treatments um, that have little cancer sayings or designs on the back uh, because I was going to the gym to build up bone density for the cancer blocker and all of that. So anyway, and trying to keep up energy during cancer treatments, it was really hard. Like you could just fall asleep at the drop of a hat. Um, but if you work out, you're, you're building energy. So I have a bunch of these tank tops and today I actually got to wear one when I went for a walk. So I will share a photo and where I got that design. Um. 